there are various neurological conditions in which it is common to see the psychiatric symptoms or psychiatric disorders coexisting there is there is a big list you know i'm not going to re- give an exhaustive list of all the conditions but from common ones to like you know simple things like uh, parkinson can have depression and anxiety associated with it stroke you know post stroke there are neuropsychological sequel from that to like you know there can be like rare uh, diseases like crutchfield jacob disease and you know psychiatric manifestation can be the first thing to be to be noticed from that to the uh, the neurological disorders like alzheimer's disease you know it, it's not uncommon that people with alzheimer's can have depression at the beginning of the alzheimer's depression with alzheimer's and depression as a result as well you know as, as a consequence and as the as the part of the something called behavioral and psychological symptoms so it is a fascinating challenging and complex uh, area this neuropsychiatry and that's what kind of makes me stimulated to to work because to elucidate to understand what is going on what are the psychiatric symptoms here what are the neurological symptoms here and where is the overlap and that's the kind of real essence of neuropsychiatry and how best we can put in some interventions to help improve the uh, quality of life okay. patients with all neurological conditions particularly if they are well settled and stable may not be like may not be necessary to visit a neuropsychiatrist yeah on the other hand the the, the notion i believe is these are all disorders of the brain you know this is because of the brain dysfunction it can manifest in psychiatric symptoms like anxiety depression or delusions and hallucinations and it can manifest in neurological symptoms it can be motor like parkinsonism but it is a cluster of symptoms so it would be good for the neuropsychiatrist to work with the neurologist and the multidisciplinary team from the beginning so that these clusters are well identified treated and there is a good outcome and good prognosis uh, for the patient so in an ideal world i would say neuropsychiatrists should be working with both the psychiatrists general psychiatrists and with the neurologist for the better kind of outcome for the patients and the carers and the when we think of how does the neuropsychiatrist help um, i can give you instances that might be helpful to understand uh, like i have seen patients where they are uh, presented with parkinsonism and we are not sure whether this is because of antipsychotic induced parkinsonism or an idiopathic parkinsonism and this is this is the kind of uh, scenario where the neurologist would love and in fact it, it might be essential for the neuropsychiatrist to be on board so that we know what to do shall we stop the antipsychotic and somebody who has taken it for years or not shall we start him on a new medication or not shall we try l dopa and see how other response is so i'm just giving one instance to describe so these these are the scenarios wherein the neuropsychiatrist can help working with the neurologist to uh, you know to to improve the to improve the outcome to improve the quality of life and sometimes there can be really really good kind of uh, outcome you know good prognosis uh, once the once the neuropsychiatrist get involved then the other aspect of this is there will be psychological kind of support as well along with understanding what is going on you know apart from just the neurological condition i think neuropsychiatrist would have a great value uh, in in that kind of team work there are so many like range of illnesses and disorders which again you know i repeat from stemming from the brain brain dysfunction which get help benefit from the neuropsychiatry neuropsychiatry involvement um and and the other question here is things like schizophrenia and depression have now been found to be brain disorders you know because of the brain dysfunction similarly you know there can be shared kind of mechanism overlap between the neurological disorders like multiple sclerosis and other disorders which share similar mechanism with the psychiatric disorders and it is important to emphasize that because the neuro intervention can help all these group of people yeah and if i can give examples interventions such as psychopharmacology that people already know things like antipsychotic antidepressants so that that can be used now 
we can go a step further and we can include interventions such as the, the example i want to give is something called catatonia people might have forgotten this catatonia is a is a collection of uh, symptoms and signs where the patient can be completely mute or immobile you know they can't they can't move and we have somehow not taught, taught you know trained well uh, the future generation of doctors with this and if we miss this you know that distress that uh, you know it is it, really difficult for the patient on the other hand and i i was telling this from my both uh, like you know uh, kind of professional experience in nhs and private if you treat it you know early with something like simple like lorazepam they make a full recovery complete recovery yeah and uh, the it, it comes under the kind of uh, you know the, the the realm of the neuropsychiatry to do this yeah but all the all doctors should be trained the reason i'm giving this example is there can be that kind of magical outcomes where you completely get them back to their normal baseline or there can be good prognosis good outcomes but even if there is a chronic condition of the neuropsychiatry so in that way neuropsychiatry i believe is essential and it, it can be greatly beneficial for for the patients when when we get this right neuropsychiatry in particular and neuroscience in general is a evolving field and there are so many like recent developments that that kind of goes on some of it is not directly translated into clinical work you know it's to do with simply like magnetoencephalography and all this magnetic resonance spectroscopy and nowadays there is artificial intelligence and all that involved but one thing i want to briefly mention is something called uh, non invasive brain stimulation you know neuromodulation particularly the technique called transcranial direct current stimulation you know uh, it is nothing but using the electrical kind of paths to give ourselves direct uh, current yeah it, it it sounds simple i'm just trying to make it too simplistic for for all of us to understand so ect used to be very effective and still is effective it got a kind of bad uh, press for reasons you know outside our discussion here but tdcs can be one of the effective the most effective kind of uh, neuromodulation technique mainly in depression yeah and uh, so these are the kind of developments which are going on and uh, it will take some years for the clinical translation in fact it is as i hope will become soon nice as approved the transcranial magnetic stimulation and they have they have no safety concerns about the transcranial direct current stimulation and i'm hoping that you know we'll be using more and more of this so these are the kind of developments which might take a bit of time for to appear on the nhs but they can be made use of straight away and there are so many patients out there with depression who do not respond to antidepressant or they partially respond or they are treatment resistant and they can benefit from this kind of uh, you know developments in neuroscience and neuropsychiatry